So, before I will discuss about the models of the universe by Eudoxus of Cnidos, let us know about this astronomer, namely Eudoxus. So, Eudoxus of Cnidos is an ancient Greek mathematician, scholar, and astronomer. He was probably born between 410 to 400 before Christ. And to the other information, he was born on 395 to 390 before Christ. His birthplace was Cnidos. Cnidos is a place founded by the Spartans. So, he was born in Cnidos, Asia Minor, now in Turkey. Based on my research, he was died on 342 to 337 before Christ and to the other information in the internet he was died on 350 before Christ in Cnidos. He was known for campaign of Eudoxos and concentric spears. Since early time man has been fascinated with discovering the cosmos or a way of referring universe. Similarly man has often been influenced by his creationist ideas that some divine powers created the universe and everything in it. For example, the ancient Greek developed some of the recorded theories of the origin of the universe. Unfortunately, many of these Greek astronomer and philosopher placed the earth in the center of their models of the universe. Ancient societies were obsessed with the idea God must have placed the humans at the center of the universe. The ancient Greek mathematician Pythagoras suggested that the earth is spherical about 500 before Christ. And this was accepted by the most ancient Greek philosopher and one of them is Yoxodos of Cnidos. So, the astronomer named Eudoxos of Cnidos, he created the first geocentric universe around 380 before Christ. Eudoxos designed his model of the universe as a series of cosmic spheres. And his model composed of 27 concentric spheres containing the stars, the sun, and the moon are all built around the earth at its center. That is the Eudoxos model of the universe. The universe was composed of earth, five other planets that are visible with a dead eye, namely Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Eudoxus assigned one spear for the fixed stars which is supposed to explain their daily movement. He assigns three spears to both the sun and the moon with, with the first spears moving in the same manner as the spear of the fixed stars. Second, the second spear explained the movement of the sun and the moon on the ecliptic plane. So, the rotation of the spear or their poles once every 24 hours accounts for the daily rotation of the heavens. It is unclear whether Eudoxus regard these spear, spears as physical entities or just mathematical constructions. The sun, the moon, the planets, and the fixed stars have spears. Have you ever wondered how the entire universe looks like? The way stars, sun, and the planet move and range in the universe? Are they just faulty or moving along the ecliptic? Luckily, with philosophy, we were able to propose different models of the universe, and one of them was Aristotle. 
What was Aristotle's early motion of the universe? Let's find out. Here's a theory figure in the Asian philosophy making contribution to logic, metaphysics, mathematics, physics, biology, botany, ethics, politics, aquaculture, medicine, dance, and theater. Aristotle is credited with founding two science, biology, and logic. He was a student of Plato who in turn studied on the Socrates and he knows what to be more empirically minded, meaning he's relying more on observation than Plato or Circuses do. So what was Aristotle's concept of the universe? Regarding our past lesson, he believed that all matter is composed of four elements, the earth, water, air, and fire. Each of these elements has a tendency to go back to its natural places. His system held the earth was the heaviest element, with a stronger movement toward the center. The water formed layers surrounding the sphere of the earth. The tendency of, the tendency of air and fire, on the other hand, was to move upward away from the center, with fire be lighter than air. As for the celestial body, making him that all celestial bodies move in a uniform motion. However, the Earth cannot have the circular motion similar to it to its stationary motion. Aristotle explained that the so-called prime mover keeps the stars moving in a constant motion. The prime mover is sort of the same concept whereby all motion in the universe is initiated by a being or force that is themselves and moves in. The century BC, Plato and Sir Aristotle wrote based on the centric of the universe. According to Plato, the Earth was a sphere. Stationary at the center of the universe, the stars and the planets were carried around the Earth, and spheres are circle arranged in the earth outwards from the center. This concept was derived from Eudoxus' work, who first proposed a geometric model of concentric spheres having Earth as the center. If the fully developed Aristotle and system, the spherical Earth is at the center of the universe, and all the other heavenly bodies are attached to 47 to 56 transparent, rotating spheres surrounding the Earth, also concentric with it, making model regarded both geocentric for having it as a center and homocentric because all the celestial bodies share the same centers which is the earth. Going back, concentric spirit to note that the sun, moon, and the fire and planet share the same center which was the earth. This made the look of nesting spirit basically having spirit within spirit with celestial bodies attached to it. If you're thinking why the proposed spear number is high, it's because according to Aristotle, several spears are needed to guide the motion of sun, moon, and the fire and on planets. This crystalline spirit all move different uniform spirit to create a revolution of bodies around Earth. Explain simple phenomena such as the universe and set of celestial objects but not the details in long time scale. Additionally, he believed that the universe is finite in size, which means it's neither shrinking or expanding, implying that it exists and change and static throughout eternity. Eventually, perfectly concentric spirit, which abandoned as if it was impossible to develop. So, a accurate model under the ideal of all the basic tenets of weak theater centrism were established by the time of Aristotle. The details of his system did not become standard until Ptolemy turns. After all, Aristotle's ideal dominated a cosmology thinking for nearly 2,000 years, and Belkis Curiosity among others, summary, Aristotle's model of the universe was a development of Axel's work, but considering the spirit as physical entities, he thought that the spirit were filled with divine and eternal either, causing them to move the prime mover caused the movement of approximately 56 spirit that guided the motion of the moon, sun, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, with fixed stars located in the celestial sphere. As the sphere moved, they maintained the same distance from the stationary Earth. While moving at the constant speed, the downside of Aristotelian model, based on perfectly concentric speed, was that it did not depend explain the change in the brightness of the planet due to a change in the distance.
Hello everyone, this video we will be discussing about the models of the universe by Ptolemy and Aristarchus. I hope you listen carefully for what I'm going to discuss. So I am a builder of channel. Let's get started. But before I initiated our discussion about the models of the universe by Aristarchus and Ptolemy, I just have a brief background in these two Greek astronomers. Okay? First it is Saudi Ptolemy was an mathematician astronomers. Natural philosophers, geographers, and astrologers who wrote several treatises, three of which were important to later Byzantine, Islamic, and European science. While Aristarchus was an ancient Greek astronomer and mathematician who presented the first heliocentric that placed the sun in the center of the known universe with stars and planets around it. So, what are the said model they stated? So let us begin with Claudius Ptolemy. Claudius Ptolemy developed a model called Geocentric Model. Geocentric Model is a model of the universe in which stationary Earth lies in the center of the universe and all the other celestial objects orbiting it. Which stated here the Earth is centered at the universe. So let's take a look at this figure of Geocentric Model. In the center, we can see the Earth is at stationary stage without any movements or any rotation to itself. Whereas the Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Sun, and Moon are the ones who orbit the Earth according to Ptolemaic model. That circular paths attached to each planet are called epicycle. Ptolemaic model was based on geocentric, as he stated the sun is not the center of the universe. However, the paths of the sun, the moon, and the other planets as observed from Earth are not circular. So when Copernicus proposed heliocentric model with Earth and all the other planets orbiting the sun, Ptolemy was compelled to abandon or forced to abandon the notion that there is no empty space between the spheres. So that's the reason his model has become cumbersome due to complication of accurate measurements. This Ptolemaic model has become too complicated to be a useful model. So this is one of the challenges he met in his model. While the model of heliocentric model by Aristarchus of Samos First person to present an explicit argument about heliocentric model, saying that the sun is the center of the universe, not the earth, which is a big contrary of Ptolemy's, Ptolemy's model about earth centered or geocentric in the universe. And Aristarchus was right for his argument. Afterwards, Aristarchus put the planets, including the earth, in the correct order of distance around the sun. Furthermore, Aristarchus suspected that the stars were just bodies like the sun who are further away from Earth. So here's the model of heliocentric by Aristarchus. We see here the planets are in epicycle. That circular path is what we call epicycle. The planets are orbiting the sun. Whereas the moon orbits the earth, which in turn spins on its axis, according to this model. Also, we know moon is our satellite. This model will be a familiar to us today as reasonable description of the solar system. In this model, earth both rotates and revolves around the sun. Because sun-centered, which is the heliocentric model. Okay, let's compare these two models. The difference between the two is geocentric model, sun orbits the earth, while heliocentric model, the planets orbit the sun. And yes, it is proven by the modern technology, which is known as solar system, that was already published in different schools and etc. So that's all and thank you for listening. Eudoxos, Aristotle's, and Ptolemy's models have the Earth as the center of the universe, while Aristarchus' models has the Sun as the center. Eudoxos, 
Eudoxus model has 27 concentric spheres for the sun, moon, planets, and the stars whose common center is the earth. Take note that geocentric meaning the earth is the center of the universe, also known as geocentrism, often exemplified specific specifically by the Ptolemaic system. Aristotle model of the universe is composed of 56 spheres guiding the motion of sun, moon, and the five known planets. I, I, Aristarchus said that the smaller celestial bodies must orbit the larger ones and since the sun is much, much larger than the earth, then the earth must orbit around the sun. The limit model introduced the concept of epicycle, different and equant to explain the absolute imperfect motion of the